I tried to quit last week, but I was too addicted. And so it was through a haze of cigarette smoke that I first saw her walking into the room in a dangerously tight dress. Her hair all wind-tossed and the colour of an expensive Cuban cigar. Her eyes the colour of thunderclouds. Maybe she'll notice me. Maybe she could be mine. Maybe I could have her. Gone. Leaving me with my cancer stick and my fourth shot at something that would burn. I didn't know who was playing. With any luck, he'd think I was a drunken loser. If I didn't have the nerve to stand my ground at a card game, there was no way I'd make an effort to go look for her, no matter how much I could get her out of my head. God, I'm, I'm sorry. She'd found me. It's okay. I wanted to ask her something else, just to hear her voice again. What's your favorite kind of flavor? That hadn't come out right, so I thought I'd try again. Um, your, your favorite? Flavor of ice cream? I thought I'd made myself clear. But maybe I should try again. <laughs> ice cream? You know. Strawberry. Why do you want to know? Of course it was strawberry. <laughs> Red and tangy and perfectly juicy. Oh, are you saying I'm juicy? <laughs> I must have said that last part out loud. Are you? She looked like she didn't know whether to laugh or slap me. I thought she could have done both, but I was glad she stuck with the first one. I'm Annabelle. Annabelle. I felt it had to be said again. Anna. Belle. Beautiful Anna. Uh, does Belle mean beautiful? I was forgetting my high school French. Maybe I needed another drink. In 1936, Jack Smith let that ball go between his legs in the cup final, you know. I thought she should, if she didn't already. The bastard. She had the loveliest smile I think I'd ever seen. Women who are sexy and know their sports history are in short supply these days. You're drunk. <laughs> I'm Matt. Drunk Matt? Oh, uh, no. Just Matt. W would you like to stay and have a drink with me? I don't think so. I was horrified to find my throat close up a little bit. Why not? I sounded like a four-year-old whose parents wouldn't get in the big chocolate bar at the corner shop. Because one more drink would put you over the edge from endearingly out of your mind to disturbingly out of your mind. She'd left a loophole. <laughs> well, would you stay and talk if I didn't have another drink? I hoped I didn't look like a fool. She wasn't the type to be around fools. It's kind of loud in here. Do you want to go across the street? To the park or something? I thought for a moment that maybe this was all an alcohol-induced hallucination and that maybe I wasn't here. Matt? Did you hear me? Her lips were painted a shade darker than her dress and they were full and plump and slightly parted. My mind was becoming a romance novel despite my best intentions. That sounds great. Annabelle and I escaped into the cool air of the late evening. Goosebumps erupted over my arms and chest. My shirt was thin and I didn't have anything under it, but I didn't care. She was even sexier in my jacket. Something I wore was now touching her. There were no street lamps deep in the park. You weren't supposed to go there at night, but it's where she was heading, and I wasn't going to argue. That's rule number one of how to deal with goddess-like women 101. Follow and don't argue. They'll just keep going their own direction whether you're behind them or not. Your disposable baggage.
So what do you do, Matt? She hadn't forgotten my name. I was elated. Oh, uh, I teach English. Where? Well, right down the road, actually. At the school. Oh. I couldn't see her face, so I couldn't read her reaction. I didn't know whether to be proud or ashamed of my job. I wanted to be an English teacher once. <laughs> oh, well, I enjoy teaching it a lot. What did you end up doing? Oh, a little of this, a little of that. Vague. Drunk. She had me there. I couldn't think of a comeback or a question, so I tried to make out our surroundings. If I was right, there should have been a memorial stone bench just over. Yeah, there it was. Why are we here? Well, when a man and a woman love each other oh, very much... Uh, I mean, here, in the park. Silly girl. We're sitting on a bench. I couldn't tell if she was being flirtatious or if she was just annoyed. Maybe I was starting to sober up a little. <laughs> yeah. No, but seriously, why did you bring me here? I mean, I thought I was the one coming on to you. I was showing genuine confusion. An anomaly in men occurring only when inebriated. You know a man named Frank Shulman? Yes? She wasn't making sense, or at least she wasn't answering my question. <laughs> now you're scaring me. Yet you're still sexy and wearing my jacket. Maybe I should get that back. I just need to know what you know about him. I... I mowed Mr. Shulman's lawn every Saturday evening. Being a teacher doesn't pay much, so this was just a way for me to get a little extra cash. <laughs> he likes a mowed lawn. That was all I could come up with. Right. Well, two weeks ago, when you went to mow his lawn, a tall man came to the front door. He's about your height, come to think of it. Do you remember? Maybe she could read something there, though the words were blurred by alcohol. So imagine my surprise when a sudden vivid image shot into my mind. W was he wearing like a weird bowler hat? Yes, that's the man. Now Matt, what you're about to say next is very important. Now I'm praying harder than I ever had for her not to remove her hand. Do you remember anything else about that night? About the man in the hat, or Mr. Shulman, anything? I wondered for a second if I should be asking why she wanted to know. But there was that one thing. Mr. Shulman paid me himself that night. Normally it's his henchman, Henry, but that night, Shulman came round the side as I was heading for the servant's door and shook me by the hand, sweaty as I was, and paid me in cash. A little bit more than usual, but I suppose I didn't think much about it because I'd been working for him for one year that night, exactly, and I thought he was being sentimental. Apparently not. I thought, a little too late, Maybe he paid me more, so I wouldn't do exactly what I was doing now. You're going to work for him again tomorrow, yes? <laughs> Is tomorrow really Saturday? Yes. Then yes. All right. Now, Matt. What I'm about to ask is going to sound quite strange. Oh, well, it already does. Don't worry about it. I need you to do me a favour, but be subtle about it, of course. If you could maybe peek in some windows or get in the house for some reason and have a poke around, but don't get them suspicious. The man with the hat should be there again tomorrow night. 
any information you can get about why he's there exactly would be very valuable. <sighs> that reminds me. You will be paid. I could feel my ears perking up. Liberally. Oh, 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 I, I hadn't thought about that. <laughs> Thanks. I stammered. I must have sounded like an idiot. Do I get to know? You, you know, uh, why you want me to do this? It's personal. Kind of need to know basis, I suppose. She was tensing up, becoming defensive. I wanted her openness back, totally understood. We stayed like that for a while. I'm not sure how long. She was the one who broke it, but I like to think there was a small hint of regret in those grey eyes. Could you come back here tomorrow night and tell me what you saw? Say no more. Your wish is my command. Do you have a pen? My breath hitched, and I hope she didn't notice. She wrote her phone number on my skin. It looked like I'd bled it out. In case of emergency. <laughs> Thanks, Matt, for doing this. Her eyes were downcast, but I could see a grateful smile on her lips. Uh, you're welcome. My voice was gruffer than I wanted it to be. She took her hand away and I ached somewhere inside. Meet here tomorrow night? Say, nine o'clock? Yeah. Her legs? She had amazing legs. I wondered how they'd feel under my hands. I needed a cigarette. Minx! I had another pack at home, so I walked there. <laughs>